Here's the Culprit count for this book. Here's the Culprit count for all the books. And here's the end of book Culprit count. Argofon book review. Argofon book review. This review is commissioned through Patreon. Patreon, please give me your money. Case 1. Mr. Body has a valuable elephant figurine. A man in a blue robe steals it and gets attacked by a lead pipe. Mustard attacks the person with the lead pipe. He's robbed by Scarlet, who runs into Plum and Mrs. Peacock. A second person in a blue robe arrives. Who is wearing blue? The two people not mentioned by name are Green and White. Obviously, Green was the man in blue. White was the other person in blue. Case 2. Body wants to install a security system. His guests are offended by the idea, and they try to convince him that it's his fault they rob him all the time. Everyone gets a password. Mustard overhears Plum's password, Scarlet gets Mustard's password, and Mrs. White steals Green's password. Green's password is used to get a revolver, Plum's password is used to get a knife, Mustard takes a lead pipe, a female who only knows her own password falls asleep, and White's password is used to get the candlestick. This is a good point to stop and figure out who has what weapon. Now we continue. Mustard is knocked out by Candlestick, who is attacked by Knife. A man with Green's password robs Knife, then gets knocked out by Candlestick, who is knocked out with a blunt weapon. That's not the pipe. Who did it? The book solution solves the puzzle the hard way, by keeping track of everyone from the start. There's an easier way. The blunt weapon isn't the pipe or the Candlestick, since the victim had the Candlestick. Therefore, it's the wrench. Scarlet is the only person whose weapon is unspecified, so she must be the wrench-wielding culprit. Okay, technically Peacock's weapon is also unspecified, but she sleeps through the whole thing, so no big deal. Case 3. The group watches movies and they all want different popcorn. Mustard wants no toppings, Plum wants butter, Scarlet wants salt and butter, Peacock wants margarine, and Green wants salt. Mr. Body's watch falls into the popcorn with salt. The person with no toppings attempts to steal it, while the person with no salt puts it in the bowl with butter and salt. Everybody goes to get more popcorn, and then the story switches to calling the characters by their names, making that entire topping section completely pointless. Peacock finds the watch in Scarlet's bowl, Green steals Scarlet's bowl, Mustard forces Green to switch with Scarlet. Who has the watch? Scarlet. It started in her bowl, Green stole it, and gave it back. Case 4. The guests make a lot of puns about fruit while plotting to steal a valuable fruit sculpture. Scarlet has the rope. A man with the revolver steals a peach and runs into Plum. Plum mentions Mr. Green, and they make a bunch of vegetable puns, even though Plum is being held at gunpoint. It's not exactly the time to make jokes. Revolver fights someone with a knife. Uh, the revolver goes off as White and Green enter the room. Who shot the gun? Mustard. He's a male who's not Plum, and Plum mentioned Green to him, so presumably it's not Green. Case 5. This is a math puzzle. The group splits up into teams of two, and you keep track of points, like 8 minus 2 plus 5 plus 1 minus 1. The winner is Team 1. Case 6. Everyone listens to the radio with weapons. Mustard likes marching music with a lead pipe. Green likes jazz and the wrench. Peacock likes classical and candlestick. White likes country and the rope. A female likes rock and roll, while the last guest has a knife. They all go to different rooms, and someone listens to the weather report. Who? This case feels just like the board game, because it's pure process of elimination. The study and Plum are the ones not mentioned, so it's Professor Plum with the knife in the study. Case 7. The guests decide to kill Mrs. White for cooking terrible food. A guest grabs the revolver and makes sure Peacock is asleep. They overhear Green fighting with Mustard, and they kill Mrs. White. Who is it? Scarlet. Scarlet and Plum are the only two not mentioned, and Plum would have gone to a different room to find Mrs. White. I don't like that deduction about Professor Plum. Knowing him, he probably would have forgotten what room she's in. Case 8, Mr. Body gets valuable hats for each person, and there are eight trades. Mustard and Plum trade, White and Scarlet trade, Peacock and White trade, Scarlet and Green trade, Plum and White trade, Mustard and Green trade, Mustard and Scarlet trade, and finally, Peacock and White trade. Who has what hat? Oh boy. 
Mustard has his own hat, Green has Plum's hat, Peacock has Green's hat, White has Scarlet's hat, Plum has Peacock's hat, and Scarlet has White's hat. I hope I got those all correct. Case 9. Everyone goes swimming with a swimsuit that matches their color. Mustard jumps in with a woman, and Green jumps in. They all start drowning, and Scarlet jumps in to save them. A male in the pool accidentally pulls a woman into the pool, and another guest jumps into the pool. Who is not in the water? Trick question, they're all inside the water now. Case 10. Everyone plots to kill Body and collect his $3 million life insurance. Body is killed with a rope. The female murderer takes the candlestick and meets a male guest. He attacks her with the wrench and calls her an old bird. Mrs. White attacks him with a bright yellow condiment. Plum knocks out White with the lead pipe. He is shot by a man who is attacked by a woman. Who committed the first and last attacks? Peacock used the rope to kill Mr. Body. We know this because she is called an old bird. Uh, similarly, one man is hit with mustard, so we assume he's Colonel Mustard. The last attacker is a woman. Peacock and White were both attacked earlier, so it's Miss Scarlet with the knife in the ballroom. The end. Post-book follow-up. Like the last book, the final case asks you to determine the identity of two different people. That throws off my end-of-book culprit count, so now I've got 13 culprits for 11 books. I'm not complaining, though. It is a good ending challenge to have two puzzles to solve, not just the usual one. Cases 6 and 10 both require you to figure out the room where something happened. Both times you figure out which of the nine rooms wasn't mentioned. If puzzles like this keep appearing... I might actually be forced to remember what the rooms are in Clue. I feel like I'm not being fair to this book by focusing only on the mysteries. The setup for each mystery is usually half or more of the story, especially in Case 7, which has six pages of build-up to one page of mystery. That was the shortest mystery of the book. Overall, it's a good book. My favorite was Case 2 Security System. I also liked the Radio Mystery and the Fruit Mystery. I give clue number 11, Death by Candlelight, a thumbs up.